Hey everyone, it's Jeff Freena with PocketNow.com. So far you've seen us unbox the Samsung Transform with Sprint. Well now we're actually going to jump into a quick software overview in part one. We're basically going to show you some of the different tweaks that Sprint has done on the device to actually make the device yours and make it easier to actually jump into the smartphone world if this is your first smartphone device. So, let's get started. <laughs> All right, and we're back and jumping into some of the software that Sprint has actually incorporated onto this device, the Samsung Transform. One very unique thing that Sprint has included here is called Sprint ID. Now, at first glance, this is a type of device that will actually bridge the gap from a normal cell phone user to having a smartphone. And the reason being is what they've done is they've actually created a very simple setup process for the Android operating system. Now, the open-ended opportunities with Android in terms of the customization, the different apps you can add, are a great opportunity for many of us, but for some people, they find it overwhelming. Now, what Sprint ID does, actually this little application, this little icon here, it opens up different profiles that you can use. So as you can see, we have the standard Sprint one already set up. We have my very own. It's just a custom one that comes on there. It's just a blank slate. And then you, you can, of course, add get new Sprint IDs. And now what this is basically going to do is take care of adding all the widgets for you adding all the different screens. So as you can see here, this is the main screen. What we've actually done is added the weather and talk flip clock and our own little shortcuts here, but what Sprint ID has done. Scrolling over to the right, you'll actually see that they bring the Sprint TV widget right there for you, as well as all of these different icons. These were actually already preloaded in terms of the Telenav GPS, which is the Sprint navigation. You have your Sprint football coverage there. You have the NASCAR coverage. You have the family locator, ESPN again. These are all shortcuts that Sprint has already taken care of adding for you. So this makes life a lot easier because you can get up and going right away. You can press the Facebook app there. It actually won't bring you to the application, but it'll actually bring you to the website. If you actually just press right here, this will open up the browser and it will bring you right to the Facebook website, as you can see here. Now it's automatically loading up the mobile version of Facebook for your viewing pleasure. So that makes life a lot easier because you can actually get through things now if you are a brand new user to Android, especially this is actually your first smartphone. Now you will have the ability for five home screens. So actually scrolling back to the left to our center home screen. Once again, this is the one that we've customized ourselves. Going over to the left one, we're actually gonna have the messaging widget. So it will show you your messages there. You can reply to a message right on the screen itself. It will give you some icons down here for you know music, camera, browser in the market as well. And then one more, this is actually the very cool one. We have what's called the Sprint Zone. So it'll basically give you shortcuts to my account. If you press that, you can also press find a store, that sort of thing. But it will give you kind of a toggle for Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, airplane mode. So I can actually press Bluetooth on, and it's that simple. You'll actually see the icon pop up there. Uh, once it actually powers, there we go, powers the actual Bluetooth chip on itself. So this really is going to make your transition to a smartphone, even just to an Android phone. Let's say you've been a user of a different phone before, you know, whether it be an iPhone, a Blackberry, whatever it may be, even a Nokia device, and you're switching to an Android device now, and you're, you know, not looking to kind of jump in over your head, this will be a good option for you because the Sprint ID will actually set things up. And to actually demonstrate that, I'm actually gonna press the ID here and just go to the custom one that they call my ID. Now this has not been touched at all. We have not loaded any kind of widgets on here. Now one thing you're gonna notice, it's a little slow to load it. So far, the experience hasn't been the snappiest. It hasn't been painful either, though. Now, as you'll see, it's the standard background. And it keeps giving us that error there about the widgets. So standard background, it'll actually give you some directions in terms of swiping to the left and right. You'll have your Google search toolbar. So same idea, we're going to have the five home screens here. But these are now completely blank. So you can start from scratch, change your wallpaper, whatever it may be. So. You can use the Sprint ID and just customize that as you, see, as you see fit, of course. But once again, that's to kind of make your experience a little bit better in terms of easing that transition. This way, though, you can change things as you see fit. Now, one of the really nice things is you do have the phone button there, the actual dedicated phone button uh, that you can bring up, which reminds us of Froyo, how they have that launcher. Unfortunately, there's no browser button built in. Now, this is running Android 2.1, and to actually show that, I'm going to go right to the settings and go to the about phone section to show you. So they've actually kind of tweaked the UI a little bit to give you a different experience there. Now, the nice thing is it doesn't have the TouchWiz UI, which most people aren't a fan of. So if you don't like TouchWiz, this could be a good option for you. As you see here, we have 2.1 for the firmware. 
The advantage of already being on 2.1 right out of the box means that most of the applications in the market, if not all, are already compatible with your device. If you were to pick up a Android device that has, let's say, 1.6 on there right now for the current version, you would be behind and you wouldn't be able to actually access a lot of the current market applications such as the official Twitter app. So that's always a great thing to be up to date, if not ahead, right out of the box. Now, it doesn't include Froyo, as we've stated, but 2.1 keeps it somewhat close. So this has been our brief software overview, part one. In part two, we're actually going to compare the Samsung Transform, which you see right here, to a Samsung Epic 4G, which are both Sprint devices. We're gonna compare actually opening up some of the different applications, such as Facebook, the Twitter applications, Google Maps, the browser, that's a big thing, doing an actual browser test. So we're actually gonna test both those out with the Wi-Fi network. Now we're also gonna compare that to the Epic 4G for the hardware overview as well. So we're actually gonna go into detail of the hardware of this device here. And we'll finish that off by comparing it to the hardware of its big brother, the Samsung Epic 4G. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it and leave any comments that you see fit. Thanks, everyone.